Hello everybody, this is Con and today I'm reviewing the Toyota Harrier which as we now know is fully imported into Malaysia by UMW Toyota Moto. The Harrier is a familiar nameplate to us because uh, for a good 10-20 years the parallel importers have been bringing this car uh, to Malaysia in massive numbers. Of course back then the Harrier was just a rebadged version of the Lexus RX. The only difference is the logo in front. Either you get a Lexus badge or a Toyota badge. But otherwise, back then, the Harrier and the Lexus RX, one and the same car. Today, not so much because um, Toyota has made the decision to separate the Harrier into a totally different product. Okay, Of course, it still shares components with Lexus, uh, notably the 2 litre turbo engine up front. But um, mechanically, the Harrier is now actually more closely related to the NX than it is to the RX. Okay, now to understand where the Harrier fits in the market of premium SUVs, we still have to go back to how Lexus positions its SUVs. Okay, now when you look at the NX and the RX versus XC60s, the X3s, the GLCs, the GLAs, the X1s and all these guys, right? You see that the NX and the RX occupy a sort of in-between spaces between where the Germans carve their niches. So, at one level, you have the GLC, the X3, the Audi Q5, and then you step up, you have the uh, X5, the GLE, the Q7. So where Lexus positions its model is that so the RX would slot in that space between the X3 and the X5. Similarly, the NX slots into that niche between where the X3 and the X1 exists. Yeah, so that is the strategy. And where does that leave the Harrier then? So the Harrier offers you pretty much an RX sized SUV but at a price tag closer to the NX. So of course the question that arises in the minds of many potential buyers is should you go for the cheaper recon models or should you pay a bit more for the officially imported one that I'm driving here today and the answer is it's really up to you because uh, but either way you look at it, there are pros and cons. The recon cars are cheaper, no doubts about it. Uh, and th because there are plenty out in the market, right? You will be, and because, and because now they suddenly have to contend with, with competing against the official importers. If you go to a recon dealer, you bargain hard, there may be a good deal waiting for you. But of course, when you come to the buying a new car, a new, you know, officially imported unit from BMW Toyota Motor, you are getting the factory warranty. You are getting a car that is configured right from the onset for the needs of the Malaysian market and also the conditions of our road and our weather. But then again, when you talk about the Harriers, the Alphards, the Wellfires, these cars generally, right, even though if you're talking about a Japan spec car, they are actually quite well built to start with and you know Toyota being Toyota, they are very conservative with their engineering and usually, even if you buy a parallel imported Toyota, you don't run into problems. But of course, the other side of the argument is that if you buy a parallel imported Toyota, if you gonna something like a Takata airbag recall for instance, you are effectively on your own in terms of specs, in terms of features. The Malaysia spec Harrier also, you will get, there, there are also some differences with the parallel imported units. Okay, firstly, most of the parallel imported units are the pre-facelift version. The one that we get here in Malaysia is the facelifted one. It has a, it has a, a number of updated equipment. Uh, the, the front face is different. You also, the, the other difference is that the parking brake, okay, the pre-facelift models have foot operated parking brake and the um, the one here that I'm driving, the officially imported version, has uh, electronic parking brake. Uh, also, the 
the officially imported version here has a has a wider suite of autonomous emergency braking and advanced driver assist features with which the parallel imported units may or may not have the biggest difference is that the parallel imported units most of them have the uh, two liter na engine this one the official ones come with the two liter turbo engine so you get a bit more performance and you know it's it's it'll be nicer to drive when you are when you're cruising on highway and when you're trying to keep up with the traffic but of course when you talk about the parallel imported ones right the thing about parallel imported ones also is that from car to car the spec can substantially vary because in the japanese market consumers have a lot more freedom to spec and choose their choose what 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 is fitted in their cars and what is not so if those of you who are seasoned shoppers in the parallel market you will notice that for the same model same year same variant one car to another can vary significantly in terms of features because in japan in market or even markets like uk or whatnot right a lot of these markets you have the flexibility to choose your car individually what can you what you fit with and whatnot okay so uh from the outside this is the facelifted version of the harrier as mentioned earlier uh the, the appearance is slightly different from the pre-facelift ones you know that have been brought in by the parallel importers one major uh you know up update to the appearance is this sweep out function of the signal lights it's a very nice touch to illustrate the upmarketness of this car and these are led headlights lah. so you notice look closely you also get to see this nice weave patterns that are put inside the headlight assembly it all adds to the overall value uh you know appearance of the car there are daytime running lights so led daytime running lights that run here along the side okay and just look overall uh this grill so called grill it has this uh you know uh it has one opaque plastic together with a shiny layer over it this is of course the harrier symbol and you see this another way this you know this sort of carbon fiber like insert trim here uh you know a, a complementing the gloss back trim at this uh, at the lower edge of the front bumper and of course you come to the side 18 inch alloy wheels side mirror integrated signal lamps keyless entry with chrome inserts on the door handle now i particularly like this 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 section okay this part of it is given a gloss this spoiler is given a gloss black finish so it blends visually it blends into the windscreen and it creates this nice cut effect uh, at on the you know when viewed from the side silhouette okay now this being the facelift the tail lights are also updated now if you have seen the pre facelift harrier these tail lights right it's like a single colorless glass which to me looks almost like uh like an accessory shop tail light this is a more dignified looking one it lo certainly looks it has a more factory fitted appearance that gives the car you know a bit more classy appearance i would say huh. turbo wording here this this show this uh communicate to communicate the fact that this car is powered by the two liter turbo engine making 231 horsepower reverse camera And of course, that Toyota logo sitting proudly on the boot lid. Okay, look inside the boot. You got elect electric tailgate opening, okay, very nice. And uh, okay, so first thing you notice, the boot floor, okay, is uh, is quite nicely flush with the boot opening. So when you carry heavy items. It just loads nicely into it and all these scuff plates here it helps you with the loading and the boot floor itself uh, of course you can open to compartments underneath and interestingly there's a two there are two different openings so let's open one by one the front here you see so when you open under here okay you have this added additional compartments as well and well this is 
this is a very deep compartment so you've got a lot of compartmentalization underneath here let's just see what's what's under is the emergency kit and you can lift this up well, you can lift this up so that's the spare tire and underneath here also this is another you can so you can split the lifting and in further up ahead there there is there's more compartmentalization so i would say that this is rather brilliant because this is rather useful so you can actually even under the boot floor right you can use all these compartmentalizations to store various small items i personally think this is very useful Very nice. I like this. Uh, I like all this. This this uh, underfloor compartments. Very neat. Uh, and of course, this is the retractable tonio cover. And of course, the tonio cover itself can be removed. So you can nicely, you know, slot the tonio cover in here. They provided these two openings here at either side. So it's ngam, it is designed ngam ngam to fit the tonio cover. Then you can cover it. So after that, when you just put this up and cover, nice. So the, the tonio cover is neatly stowed away. Uh, of course, the seats, the back seats have 60-40 split folding. If I were to make one comment, is that there is no accessible lever from within an arm's reach when you are here in the in the boot. So let's say when you're loading something heavy, you load that thing in, you want to extend your boot floor, you cannot. So if you want to fold the seats down, seat backs down, you have to come open open this door. You know, and then and then release this lever and then the seat topples down. Okay, of course, um, the the floor the connection between floor and the seat back is a relatively seamless floor okay but it's not flat huh? it's slightly slanted so if you have heavy objects it will slant slightly backwards but it is seamless okay it is relatively seamless so you won't have so much of rocking about and i appreciate these strips here um for you to rest he your heavy objects on as well so this is pretty okay i'm just surprised the oh, I'm just surprised that they don't have a lever like position somewhere here for which I can remotely release the seat folding mechanism. I think that is a surprising oversight from Toyota's part. Okay, so I dropped this side as well. It comes down. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, this is the full cargo room available. And then of course you've got Powered closing of the tailgate. Okay, so before we explore inside, let's look at the door card. Uh, you you note that it's all leather door door trim, hard plastics below. But this is a nice grade of hard plastic. Okay, there's gloss black finish here, and of course there's contrast stitching. So the contrast stitching, okay, red on black contrast teaching so it shows a very distinctive pattern here um, this is definitely more flair than we are accustomed to in toyota models which is very good effort okay so let's look inside ah pull this seat up this one as well now don't be stunned by the by this by this surprisingly upright angle the seat is reclined adjustable allow me to set step inside and demonstrate first okay so i'm seated in a fairly upright position right so now i'm this is a this is a more comfortable you know uh, recline of course i can go further down all the way here this is as far as it goes so on long distance trips this is probably very useful if i want to you know take a take a nice uh rest or okay on the move so let's bring this up a little bit this is the center armrest 
and uh, as is usual these days you can't have a center armrest without cup holders this one has a cup hold this one has okay so yeah you pull, push this out and this is this is spring loaded this two is so this one drops down to hold the cup and this this hold this cupid here is spring loaded so you can just put your bottle in and it will hold it into position and of course just push it back in the mechanism feels quite solid okay, and of course you have individual adjustable headrests okay adjustable headrests and of course con contrast stitching contrast stitching on the seats as well so let's look at the available amount of available room so i'm 170 cent centimeters tall well this is a bit tight a bit tight i've got an inch of room up here but leg room is pretty decent okay this the this passenger this front passenger seat is pushed quite far back but still uh, i have enough space to cross my legs so at the trailing edge of the front center console uh, you've got you've got dedicated aircon blowers a bit low but good enough that it is there and the floor is flat so you, you can so a third passenger can sit here without without too much of a problem okay so for the middle passenger middle rear passenger to buckle up the seat belt you have to first put on the ang you have to anchor the seat belt here which is a rather weird position okay because uh, it is like with it, it is like two inches into it is like two inches into the space of the left passenger so you buckle this in and then this buckle here is for the passenger so you start you sit here okay serviceable but I think this really intrudes into the space of this guy sitting all right so let's look inside and uh so material wise same as what you see at the back at the rear door you got you got leather trim here with red contrast stitching gloss black inserts with metal trim contrast trim as well hard plastics and also you notice at the bottom of this uh this uh we got this door handle here it's carpeted very nice together with this harrier logo emblazoned here on the leather so look inside now you see up here there is a full length panoramic room on roof right and here's the dashboard so the overall design of this is actually quite nice it, it shows a touch of flair it is not just straight angles Toyota certainly did to put some curved surfaces so pretty much like what we saw earlier in the Innova even though this is not what you would call an enthusiast oriented car but Toyota certainly put effort into the design to make this cabin look not so square and so I like all these nice touches of flair, particularly here, this part of the, the dashboard. So I like the interplay of these lines, okay? It shows that Toyota didn't just settle for a plain cabin design. It's very nice, okay? So let's start the engine. It's very hot out there. So as you can, as you see, the steering and, and seat self-adjusted. Yep, to... Uh, to my preferred driving position which of course i've preset earlier before i get the controls at the side you get a switch here to open the rear tailgate park electronic parking brake okay because initially right the harrier did not come with electronic parking brake so they put this switch here the pre face sleeve harriers that you get from the uh, the recon dealers they have foot operated parking brake so this is a new addition that came with the face lift so you get auto start stop electronic stability control and also auto high beam the instrument cluster is a very simple, no-nonsense cluster. Notice that the, the speedometer reads only until 180 kilometers per hour. That's a result of this car being based on the Japan spec model. Okay, Japan spec cars all limited to a, to a speed of 180 kilometers per hour. All right. So this is a very rudimentary instrument cluster. You get an, a, a, sen a screen at the center, which you, sh of course, browse through the various trip computer displays and of course this car has uh, has adaptive cruise control it has 
uh, it's a very rudimentary adaptive cruise control like it has lane keep assist and all that okay so here move let's look at the center console now this is the hazard light button i quite like this hazard light button because you see right this is one whole piece with the digital clock the digital clock there looks a bit old-fashioned but this is one whole piece this whole thing plastic here is one whole piece together with the hazard light switch and um, this as you know this is the same head unit as you see in every official toyota model in malaysia from the vios right up to the chr to the altis to the camry this unit this is the same one so of course the japan spec cars they will have their own japan specific uh an infotainment system but this one this is uh set for malaysian spec cars you have one usb port here but that's it no other usb ports here i think for today's standard that's a little out of date yeah so i think i think these cars these days you need more than one usb port not just to connect your devices to play music but also sometimes just to charge our mobile phones on the go so here's let me just put down this uh shifter so here's the climate control so it's one seamless panel or sub or somewhat seamless panel and uh so it's all touch okay you operate your fan and engage disengage your aircon off so the temperature control you raise and lower the temperature by sliding your fingers not perfectly working any at all times but you notice that there are slight indentations here okay that allows you to when you're driving just you can just mindlessly reach your hand here feel for these indentations and then just slide them up and down to adjust your temperature okay uh, so you can adjust eco mode normal mode and sport mode okay wow right and of course the this is a six-speed automatic transmission you get manual adjustment right so coming further down here you get this lid lidded area it opens up to reveal a cup holder which this one you can remove and this is another spot here you have a 12 volt socket to the back inside here this is the center console box underneath there is another 12 volt socket but that's it no further usb ports here's the glove box a pretty large glove box yeah and basically that's it so in summary right this is a this a well designed cabin it is very nicely designed very beautiful looking uh, i like the flare in this design uh, the quality also is as per toyota's usual standards very good but when you touch and feel all these plastics right you get the sense that they deliberately held back on the material grade to create a separation from this to a lexus you get the impression that toyota is capable has the means to give you a higher grade of material but they opted to reserve that for lexus and they gave you this instead which is also still good it still appears first and foremost durable it feels well definitely a step or two up from what uh what i experienced earlier in the innova but you get the you really get the impression that it is one step down from what you get in the lexus so on to the driving uh the harrier you can't compare this car to a bmw x3 or volvo xc60 or any european suv for that matter but what it does offer is that it is a very it is a very pleasant car it is very easy going the steering is quite nicely weighted forget about feedback it is nicely weighted so the car doesn't feel cumbersome to drive when you are uh, in tight in a tight space and on the highway it is stable enough for you to sustain a cruise of you know 100 110 kilometers per hour no problem um, and the engine the engine transmission combo feels very smooth very refined now i am doing highway speeds and the car is 
not very noise. There's not a lot of noise. There's a bit of wind noise. The engine and transmission also feels very, very suited for the application. And the overall setup of the car just feels very refined, very smooth, right? Um, because of its SUV, big SUV body, a bit of wind noise is inevitable. But there is not a lot of mechanical noise as you as you coast along on the highway and believe me when you when you put your foot down on the throttle when you maintain like say 20-30% on the throttle right the car still gently but relentlessly builds up speed so this is not a car which you can and, and in any way argue that it is underpowered it is not right you cannot of course you cannot chase that Mercedes GLC 43 but you will not be left very far behind. The suspension is very comfortable. Uh, it's, it absorbs, you know, bumps, potholes without any fuss. Of course, when you when you corner too enthusiastically, there will be a bit of body roll to expect. But as I said, if you are looking for an SUV that also have also handles well, you have to look European. Okay, this car. The Brief of this car, the focus of this car is comfort and refinement, and I would say it nailed the brief spot on, absolutely spot on. And of course, the ownership uh, aspect of it this is a bloody Toyota. All you have to do is just go back, change engine oil, change oil filter, right? This thing will just keep running and running and running and running and running forever, you know. As and you can see all this old. Uh, Lexus RX and Toyota Harriers on the road. You can go and interview their owners. A lot of them will probably still tell you that, oh yeah, my car is still good. You know, engine still smooth, still running well, still quiet, still comfortable. So I think a few, uh, some time back, Bobby reviewed the uh, parallel imported version of the Harrier, and he concluded that this was effect essentially like a Camry SUV and. That is a fair comment and it thoroughly encapsulates what the preposition of this vehicle is for better or for worse. Because if you are coming from a Camry, this essentially offers you the same thing in an SUV body. You have a very refined engine, you have a very comfortable ride, it's very quiet. This car is very quiet on the move, okay, and uh, it is painless to maintain. And, and it is, you know, it is a car with the, with the kind of stature that if you if people see you driving this car, okay, it may give you a bit of an uncle image, but it shows, it, it, it communicates that you are a successful yet sensible person. And is that is not necessarily a bad thing at all. I would say that yes, this is not an exciting car, but it fulfills its brief. It gets the job done as per what people expect of it. And there is really nothing more that you can ask of it. But then you may want to ask me, if I were to buy a Harrier, will I buy parallel import or will I buy uh, official? The answer is obvious. I would buy the official car because A, I think this I would prefer to have this turbocharged engine together with the six-speed motor as opposed to, uh, to the CVT and of and B, this is a newer car, newer design. So yeah, that's it lah. I mean the Harrier is a sensible choice, it is a dignified choice. It is not an exciting car, yes, but it is a car that you know it will keep going serve you well. You know it does not say negative things about you as a person. Okay, so the Toyota Harrier, not a particularly exciting choice, but very very far from being a bad one either. So if you are interested in this car, good to go. No reason to discourage you whatsoever from getting it. Okay?